Phineas Gage, was a 25-year-old railway worker in the 1800s, who was tasked with clearing rocks away, so the rack could be laid properly. This usually involved using an iron rod to insert explosives into the rocks, before light a fuse to explode the gunpowder. On September 13, 1848, this procedure went wrong, and the explosion occurred earlier than expected, firing the iron rod which was 3.5 feet and 13 pounds, straight through Gage's head and piercing his brain. Like a javelin, the rod landed several yards away. But unlike a javelin, it was carrying a bit of brain with it. Despite the fact that almost anyone who experienced a similar injury would be killed instantly, Gage survived and transported himself to a hospital. There, doctors were able to patch up the wounds and keep him alive. The only lasting damage, affected his personality, character, and his eye. The rod had damaged certain parts of his brain that made him less reliable, and diminished his inhibitions. Gage lived for another 12 years, saddled with a drooping eyelid, seizures, and dramatic emotional and cognitive problems. He remains a subject of medical fascination to this day. Wildlife conservationist Greg Rasmussen, thought he was going to die in 2003, when his plane was hit by strong winds and crashed in the African bush. Over the next 27 hours, he was subjected to dehydration, painful heat, and a number of animal attacks. This included being charged by stampeding elephants, and later being stalked by a lioness and approached by hyenas. Fortunately, he was able to drag himself back to the wreckage of his aircraft, despite two broken legs and a fractured pelvis. By the time he was finally spotted and rescued, doctors feared they would not be able to save his legs. It took surgeons around 100 operations to save them, and prevent them from requiring amputation, though he now stands a full 3 inches shorter due to the damage. When Anna Baginum, an orthopedic surgeon from Sweden, had a skiing accident in 1999, she almost certainly should have died. While she was skiing in Norway, she lost control of her skis, fell headfirst onto a frozen stream near a waterfall, and somehow slid through an open gap in the frozen water. Her body became trapped under the ice, which was about 20 meters thick. She found a small air pocket to breathe, and she suffered circulatory arrest due to the cold temperatures after 40 minutes. In total, she sat in the water for nearly an hour and a half. During that time, her body temperature went as low as 56.6 degrees Fahrenheit, due to extreme hypothermia. It took a team of over 100 medics at a nearby hospital, 9 hours to bring her back to life. It took an extra 2 months for her to recover from paralysis, and gain back most of her bodily functions. By 2009, she only suffered from some minor nerve damage issues. It was speculated the extreme cold slowed down her metabolism, meaning, her cells needed much less oxygen to survive. Eva Wisniewska, a 35-year-old German woman, was an experienced paraglider, and internationally known for her paragliding feats. In 2007, she was paragliding in Australia when she ran into a horrific storm. During the worst of it, she was sucked up a vortex at a speed of nearly 50 miles per hour, to a maximum height of almost 33,000 feet, higher than the top of Mount Everest, and almost at the point where jumbo jets cruise. As the storm raged around her, the lack of oxygen at that altitude caused her to pass out for around an hour. Somehow, she drifted unscathed through temperatures of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, as hail and lightning engulfed her body. According to doctors, the fact she passed out may have helped her survive, by slowing down her heart rate and bodily functions. This gave her the chance to wake up later after the storm was dying down, and then land back to Earth. In the summer of 2010, a 12-year-old girl decided to take a leap of faith, and hopped on a ride called Terminal Velocity at Extreme World, an amusement park in Wisconsin Dells. The family had traveled all the way there from their home in Florida, just for her to try it. The ride worked by dropping participants over 100 feet into a net, 
without the use of any safety harnesses. Horrifyingly, the operator mistakenly released her with no net in place. She fell directly onto the concrete, breaking her back and pelvis, and suffering brain damage, along with numerous other severe injuries. Miraculously, she survived. The girl, named Tegan, stayed in a nearby hospital for two months before she was well enough to head home. Her parents filed a lawsuit, and the operator of the ride was charged with negligence. The family agreed to a settlement with the park. When the boulder crushed Aaron Ralston's right arm and trapped him, he had only one liter of water, two burritos, and a few chunks of chocolate, along with headphones and a video camera. There was no hope of anyone finding him, since he told no one where he was going. It was such a bleak situation that 27-year-old Ralston, used the camera to record his last will and testament. He's since shown the footage to his parents, but has said he will never release it to the public. After failing to move or chip away at the boulder, Ralston was forced to amputate his own arm with a blunt knife. On the sixth day, he completed his gruesome plan, made an improvised tourniquet, and repelled 65 feet down to escape. He was found by Dutch tourists, and later picked up by a search and rescue helicopter. Vesna Volovic, a flight attendant and the sole survivor of the 1972 crash, of Jot Flight 367, holds the Guinness World Record for surviving the longest fall of 33,000 feet, without a parachute. When explosives detonated in the plane's luggage compartment, the plane broke apart midair above Czechoslovakia. The other passengers were most likely sucked outside, but Volovic stayed in the fuselage, wedged in by a food cart, as it fell onto the ground. The trees and snow probably helped cushion its fall, and against all odds, Volovic survived, the only one of the 28 passengers and crew to do so. Her injuries included broken legs and vertebrae, a fractured skull, and temporary paralysis. She was also comatose for part of her recovery. She was able to walk again less than a year after the crash. She had no memory of the flight after boarding, though, her first memory was seeing her parents in the hospital. She also disagreed when people referred to her as lucky, pointing out that if that were true, she never would have had this accident. Volovic died in 2016 at the age of 66. While riding a freefall ride called the Superman, Tower of Power at Six Flags in 2007, a 13-year-old girl suffered a freak accident, that resulted in her feet being cut off. A cord got wrapped around her feet, which severed them from her legs at the angles. Doctors were able to miraculously reattach one foot, but were forced to amputate the other leg below the knee. The ride, which pulls passengers up 177 feet before dropping them at 54 miles per hour, was later dismantled. Eventually, the entire theme park closed because of financial troubles. The girl relearned to walk, and has remained optimistic throughout the recovery process. Caitlin Lassiter, told the Vanderbilt University publication, that everything happens for a reason, and that everyone has their own life story. Roy Sullivan was a U.S. park ranger, who worked at Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. During his life, he was struck by lightning, a world record seven times, each in its own separate incident. In the 35 years between the first and seventh strikes, he was never seriously injured, but did suffer from burns and get knocked out several times. Still, based on Sullivan's description, they were hardly pleasant experiences. He considered his fourth strike in 1972 the worst, and claimed to have been struck as a child while helping his father in the garden when he was a boy, although it did him no damage. His status as a human lightning rod also caused some loneliness. As Sullivan explained, naturally, people avoid me. I can't blame them. Who wants to be near somebody that's all the time getting hit by lightning? Sullivan died in 1983. As a lifelong and enthusiastic lumberjack, it shouldn't be a surprise, Fourthman Murph, was still using his trusty chainsaw to chop down trees in his local area, at the age of 74. However, in 1984, 
he suffered an accident that was almost impossible to survive. While he was out trimming trees, a branch fell and knocked him out, throwing him into a ditch. The fall broke his leg and knocked him out. When he finally regained consciousness, he found a still running chainsaw, was cutting through his neck. He stood up, positioned his head, so blood wasn't running down his windpipe, and drove himself a half mile to his neighbor's house. They went to the hospital 17 miles away, where doctors found he had sawn through his windpipe, esophagus, and jugular veins, leaving just the spine, and some skin holding his head in place. Several surgeries later, Murph fully recovered, and went on to live for another 18 years.